You're looking now at a live picture of the state Senate in action. Moments ago, the upper house passed a recession year and election year budget that raises $2.8 billion in new taxes on businesses and residents, but preserves property tax rebates to homeowners with limited and fixed incomes. The Democrat-controlled Senate has just approved a new $29 billion state budget. Earlier today, the Assembly passed the spending plan. We have live team coverage tonight from the State House. We begin with senior political correspondent Michael Aaron, who's covering the Senate tonight. Michael, it's been a long day down there. What's the latest? Well, Jim, the Senate came in around 4 o'clock and then broke for dinner and then got on to the budget at around 9 o'clock tonight. And after a two-hour debate, uh, the vote was 22 in favor, 17 against, a pure party-line vote. Uh, Senator Ron Rice was expected to vote no, but he voted yes. Only Jeff Van Drew among the Democrats voted no. Uh, it was an interesting debate. Let's hear a little of it. Democrat Barbara Buono thanked her colleagues for fashioning what she called a budget replete with pain but crafted with compassion and noted that it increases aid to public schools by $291 million despite a global economic meltdown. This budget may be a reflection of tough choices, but it also embodies a strong commitment to our children by investing in their education and in their higher education, ensuring they reach their greatest potential. While other states are robbing the next generation of their dream of a college degree by cutting state aid, California cut it by a billion, and increasing tuition 14% in the state of Washington, we in New Jersey, found a way to use federal funds to provide an additional $39 million in higher education funding over and above what the governor proposed in March. Republican Tony Bucco deplored the seven tax hikes in the budget on high wage earners, smokers, drinkers, and business, and called it the worst budget he's seen in his 14 years in the legislature. If this budget passes... New Jersey will have the highest marginal income tax rate as well as the highest property taxes in the nation. Our state will have second highest sales tax in this nation. Could there be anything worse than high sales tax during a recession? We are trying to encourage consumers to spend. Republican Kevin O'Toole said add next year's seven tax increases to all the others over the past eight years and you have people leaving the state and shutting businesses. Fiscal year 2009, we have three new taxes, $503 million, and they are in this budget. Fiscal year 2008, six new taxes, $79 million, and they are in this budget. Fiscal year 2007, 27 new taxes, $1.9 billion, and they feed this budget. Fiscal year 06, five at $153 million. Fiscal year 2005, 17 at $1.6 billion, and they are in this budget. Fiscal year 2004, 24 at $695 million. And fiscal year 2003, 21 new taxes, $1.4 billion. Add them up. 110 new taxes feed this budget over $7 billion. You wonder where the jobs went. This was not created overnight. Built Where Republicans see a glass half empty in this budget, Democrats see a glass half full. In total, after dealing with an over $8 billion shortfall, property tax relief will still represent over half, 53%, or $15.4 billion of our budget. All this has been accomplished during an unprecedented decline in state revenue. It's a house of cards. It's a house of cards. That's what we're living with right now. This budget portrays spending as less than it really is, and it's papering over a very real deficit. Quite simply, this budget does not represent the priorities of the people of this great state of New Jersey. The people want a budget that they can afford. They want a budget that provides tax relief. And they want a budget that encourages the job creation that unemployed New Jerseyans need right now in order to survive. This state is like every other state throughout this country. Whether they're run by Republicans or Democrats, it does not matter. From California to Florida to Maine to New Jersey to New York to Connecticut, we're all in the same boat. Did we put ourselves in that boat? 
What happened? Look what's going on in our cities. Ask the mayors. Ask the mayors about tax appeals up a thousand percent. Now, is that John Corzine's fault? The legislature's fault? Whose fault is it? Washington, D.C. did this to us, not ourselves. Now the budget has passed 22 to 17 along party lines. Governor John Corzine has until midnight Tuesday to sign it. It's expected that he's going to sign it on Monday. I'm Michael Aaron in the Senate. Zach Fink has been covering the assembly handling of the budget today. Zach? Well, Michael, it was late this afternoon when the Assembly passed the budget 45 to 34. Two Democrats voted against it. All Republicans were united in their opposition. There were no abstentions. This budget is actually $2 billion smaller than the first budget approved by Governor Corzine in his first year in office in 2006. At about midday, the Assembly began debate on the $28.9 billion budget. This budget is a reminder... A reminder of the extent of the economic collapse across the globe. In real terms, this budget is $3.9 billion less than last year. If this budget of $29 billion meets the core needs of our state, why did it cost $33.5 billion two years ago? I submit that this budget represents a non-responsive approach to solving a chronic problem that may be a fatal financial disaster heaped upon our state. Throughout the budget process, which started in early March with the governor's budget message, Republicans have recommended steep cuts in state government. Democrats say they have done that while also protecting the state's most vulnerable citizens. How can these people who are caring people get up and say cut, 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 as though cuts produce no blood, produce no pain? You can't cut and think it's going to affect only the bottom line. The Democratic Party is in charge of this chamber, the Senate, and the governorship. They have all the marbles. You bear the responsibility because you have the power. And frankly, you should be held accountable. Our side has repeatedly offered to help, and yet we have been rebuffed. Prior to debate on the actual budget, the Assembly passed a number of revenue raisers, new taxes and fees that will be needed for this budget to become law. An excise tax of 25 percent on liquor and wine was passed 45 to 34, an extension of the corporate business tax passed 43 to 34, and an increase in the tax on health insurance premiums for groups passed 42 to 34 with two abstentions. There was considerable debate on a bill to increase the tax on people earning more than $400,000 a year, with some invoking a similar tax, which was enacted in 2006. My question for everyone to consider today is in raising this tax, with Americans growing more mobile each year, how many thousand half millionaires are we going to lose with this tax raise? And if we lose them, have we actually increased revenue? Of course we haven't. I want to thank the Assemblywoman for having raised that particular issue with regard to the so-called half-millionaires because my statistics show that, indeed, at the time that we did this, there were somewhere around 30,000 filers who met that category. Today, as of today, there are 45,000 filers who meet this category, which which proves that there was a 50 percent increase in that particular category. In the end, the income tax increase of three quarters of a percent passed 42 to 35 with one abstention. The same bill also included the restoration of some property tax rebates, which after being taken out of the budget were put back in after a successful tax amnesty program brought in $500 million in unanticipated revenue. It allowed us to provide rebates up to, for New Jerseyans making up to $75,000 a year, and it allowed us to maintain the property tax deduction for families making up to $250,000 a year. We find that there's over a million two hundred thousand people who will not be receiving a full rebate this year. And those who will be getting uh, a rebate will be getting a partial rebate. Now, the debate over rebates and who should get them once that windfall was found was over non-seniors. Seniors will be getting the same rebate that they got last year. Uh, This evening, the Assembly wrapped up its business. They said that that is all they have to do for the entire session for the year. They're expected to break for the summer. Another one is scheduled for Monday. However, they will decide tomorrow whether or not to go forward with that. They don't anticipate having to do so. And a couple of other bills that passed away, about 97 were passed out by the Assembly. There was one that will authorize 
authorize bonding to purchase land for open space that will go to the voters in a referendum in November and an economic stimulus package also passed the full assembly. I'm Zachary Fink, live at the State House. Jim, back to you. State House correspondent Zachary Fink, senior political correspondent Michael Aaron. Great coverage down there today. Thanks.